Greetings, everyone. My name is Connor, and I'm here to take you on a journey back beyond the Western Reach and across the great Olean Sea to a city perched atop a great unexplored land, the city of Alavast, home to the heroes that saved the world. Welcome to this abridged retelling of the adventures of the Unexpectables. Welcome to the Alavast Archive. Prologue. Welcome to Alavast. Alavast, a newly discovered continent by the voyagers on the grand ship the Canary. This untamed land promises new adventures, mysteries, and possibilities to all who come to it. A great city was built in its center, a bastion of wanderlust and discovery, a prestigious sanctuary in otherwise wild lands. However, for all its promise and splendor, not just anyone can make their way into the city. It is the hard workers, mighty warriors, brilliant scholars, influential politicians, peoples of significance that will make their marks on the world that count themselves amongst the population of the city. Such is the desire of four rookie adventurers. These individuals find their paths converging here, at the city of Alavast, where the unexpected awaits. Our story begins with our would-be heroes in the outermost rung of the city, known as the Tent Town, a hive of scum and villainy, populated by thieves, mercenaries, and those otherwise deemed unworthy to enter the city proper. At a lonely quest board in this slum district is where Task, a kobold ranger with a deadly aim and a chip on his shoulder, Panic, a handsome, talented, and egotistical tiefling bard, and Greckles, a keen yet secretive Kenku rogue from a far-off land, meet each other for the first time. They had all privately taken a job from a halfling farmer by the name of John Fleetfinger, and they decided an alliance, although an uneasy one, would be the best bet for the three of them to succeed. Journeying to the farm together, they met John and his wife, who explained that a strange two-headed dog had been sneaking into their farm at night and eating livestock, and needed to be exterminated. He also explained that a homeless orc that he had taken in, in exchange for manual labor and protection, would be accompanying them on this task. A whimsical, if slightly dim, orc barbarian by the name of Borky. Setting out to find the two-headed dog, it wasn't long before the group ran into trouble, as Borky stumbled upon a pack of hungry wolves who attacked the party, eager for their next meal. A fight ensued, and the newly formed party emerged victorious, but not without Borky and Panic sustaining injuries. The group then found a cave, which appeared to be the den of this two-headed dog they'd been sent to put down. Deciding that an ambush was their best bet, Greckles attempted to lure the beast out of its den by using his uncanny mimicry of a wounded chicken. However, Borky's chicken impression proved superior, and the Death Dog emerged to battle the party. Task's swift arrows, Borky's brutish strength, Panic's explosive songs, and Greckle's cunning precision won the day, and the Death Dog was slain by the Kenku's daggers. Exploring the felled beast's den, the group found a bronze necklace, which Borky donned. Some miscellaneous valuables and a fresh, undisturbed cabbage covered in a thin layer of dust. Task took great interest in the cabbage and soon discovered that the plant was nearly invincible as it was impervious to any form of damage the group threw at it. Borky even tried to bite the cabbage, losing a tooth in the process, which Greckles pocketed without notice. 
Returning to John Fleetfinger's farm with the heads of the beast that had been killing his livestock, he accidentally discovered that whenever the word lettuce was uttered around the cabbage, it would lock in place as if frozen by time. With their first job completed, John paid the party and gave them each an abacus ticket, which would give them temporary access to the city of Alabast. For now, the party would rest, recuperate, and celebrate their victory for a few days in Tent Town. Upon awakening from a night of drinking and gambling, the party was met with a refined elven woman by the name of Elena, who represented one Abacus Fleetfinger, relative of John Fleetfinger, respected accountant, and founder of Alavast. She had come to collect the party for an important job as part of the terms of their Abacus tickets. Escorting the party through the sprawling city of Alavast, Elena led them to Abacus's tower. Though initially unimpressed, Abacus offered to contract the party as part of the city's racial inclusion program and sent them on a mission to the western reaches of the continent. Abacus explained that an old friend of hers, a human man by the name of Peyton Black, had sent an urgent and vague request to Alavast, explaining that something had come to the village of Wolfsden and stolen something precious. In exchange for solving the theft, Abacus agreed that upon their success, they would not only receive a significant amount of gold, but also be allowed to remain within the city's lower districts, a stark improvement from Tent Town. The party agreed to these terms, although Task wished for two things in addition. First, a wizard to examine the magical cabbage and find out what it is, and second, to purchase the aid of bounty hunters to track down the whereabouts of his sworn enemy. Abacus agreed to the ranger's terms, but before they could leave, Borky rudely slammed his leg on Abacus's desk to show her the bite wound he had received on their mission, prompting the powerful halfling wizard to polymorph Borky into a turtle for his insolence. Before the rest of the party incurred her wrath, they quickly left the tower to scope out the lower crafting district and get their bearings in the city. While exploring, the party witnessed an altercation in an alley of a thug robbing a woman of her valuables. Though our heroes, except for Borky who was still a turtle, initially attempted to resolve things peacefully, the situation quickly escalated and a fight ensued. Eventually, they were able to subdue the criminal and turn him over to the local city guards. This unfortunate woman, named Willow, was an apprentice wizard who was trying to find her way in the world and ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Impressed by the bravery of the party and Panic's charm, she gave each member of the party a potion, and to Panic, she gave a ring that would protect him from a spell that was stored in its gem. With our heroes now better equipped, and Borky nearly crushing Panic as he returned to his original form, the party set out to the untamed woods of the western forests.